Hi guys, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Uh, it's a whip parade. <laughs> Thumbnail. <laughs> Ooh. Hi guys, welcome to the whip parade. <laughs> I'm excited to get into it. I have 33 whips to show you. It's a lot. <laughs> It's so many, um, but that's okay. I think these will mostly all get completed. There are a couple abandonment um, issues that I may discuss on a couple of these. I don't know, we'll see what happens as I open them. There are some of these that haven't been opened in like four months and I'm very excited <laughs> to look at them. I know I'm just gonna wanna stitch every single one of these as I open them up, which is a good thing because I'm not doing the hashtag no new starts in uh, 2021. But I do need to like slow down a little bit on my starts and get some of these done before I start new ones. So let's just jump in. <laughs> uh, I have them all lined up in front of me and I'm probably going to eliminate some of the rustling. So if it, you know, feels a little choppy sometimes it's because I'm eliminating all the zoop and um, these aren't ironed. <laughs> I feel like everyone gives that disclaimer in their whip parade <laughs> if you have more than like five whips. You're like, I'm sorry I didn't iron all these. <laughs> so these are coming straight out of the bag. Um, if anything's just like unviewable, I'll give it a quick iron and uh, show it to you. But let's just, enough caveats. I just want to show them to you. So let's get into it. Okay, so I am doing these in chronological order. So we're going oldest to newest. And the oldest current whip I have, I started around March of 2019. I don't have the exact date, but that's my best estimate. Um, oh, let me show you the chart first. I don't know how to do this. Uh, this is Prairie Schooler, a Prairie Garden. And this is one that might be a contender for abandonment. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, here is, so I had, I decided to stitch it all in one piece. And here is where I got before I put it aside. This is a 32 count linen that I over dyed myself. Um, it's fine. You know, the Prairie Schooler chart is beautiful. I do wish I had just stitched one or two of my favorites and not decided to start the whole big piece. Um, one, because I don't really know where I would put this in my house. Like it'll be a big piece um, that I'd have to frame, right? Um, I'm stitching it with all the call for DMC colors uh, and it's lovely. I just, I don't know. Oh gosh, this is hard. I don't want to put anything immediately on the abandoned list, but I don't know if I'm going to come back to this one or not. I'm going to have to keep thinking about it. Maybe if, if I haven't touched it in next year's whip parade, then I'll know it's got to go. Maybe that's a good rule. Like if I haven't touched this, since the previous whip parade, then obviously I don't wanna be stitching on it. I'm gonna keep that in mind. So anyways, that was my prairie garden. Okay, next up in my super cute kitten bag. <laughs> so this next one is Hands On Design Block Party Meow. Um, I started this in May of 2019 and I hate the fabric. <sighs> I want the finished product, but I hate this Witchell, <laughs> Witchell linen. And I didn't know that at the time. I don't think I'd ever stitched on Witchell when I bought this um, all as kitted because it comes with the little topper and stuff. So I wanted to stitch it the exact size to put it together um, like she has it in the instructions. And so I have all the weeks um, week's flosses that she calls for. And here is the progress I made, which this was the halfway point or is the halfway point. I did stitch on this a little bit, maybe over the summer, but I just, I really don't like stitching on this linen. I should probably just power through because I really do want the finished product. It's so cute, but I feel like my stitches look really terrible. On this linen it's a 32 count or is it a 28 count i think it's a 32 count witchel um linen i don't know we'll see i 
I have a feeling I'm going to work on this over the upcoming year and this will not be an abandon because it is really cute. And I do have, I mean, that's the thing though. So I have half of the band done, but there's this whole top and I did get a tiny, tiny start on that last time I picked this up. Um, but again, oh, this linen. Should I just start it over? No, I don't want to start it over. Moving on. Let's see what number three is. <laughs> number three is uh, Prairie Birds by the Prairie Schooler. Uh, I have shown you guys this before because I was, I was stitching these individually. So I do have some finishes from this chart. Um, I started this in June of 2019. And <laughs> so let's see. So I have a finish that's still on the fabric that needs to be FFO'd. And then I have, oh gosh, needle still in it and everything. I have my whip, which is, uh, the third of the, the blocks that I was gonna do. I, you may remember I finished um, this top one right there, the hummingbird. I finished that with a cute little square frame I found at Hobby Lobby. And so the goal was to do three of the birds all finish the same way to hang up um, in the spring. And I just need to finish stitching this third one and FFO those two and then I can cross that off the list. Oh, I should mention, I did my own thread conversion to overdyes on this. I really wanted to stitch with overdyes, and so I just subbed them out. Um, I might be using a couple DMCs, but I'm pretty sure they're all overdyed. Okay, next up is another project, and I don't know if it's gonna get finished, and don't, don't freak out. I'm telling it to myself and to you. <laughs> um, this is the Snow Village series by Country Cottage Needleworks. I signed up for this club right as it kicked off and I was like, yes, love it. And I had just stitched something on Dove Linen by Weeks Dye Works and I was like, I'm stitching that on a darker blue. I'm gonna change the colors a little bit. And I have not really worked on it in a while. I did get a couple of the blocks done. Let me show you where I'm at and then we can discuss. Sorry again for the big creases. It's been folded up for a year. Um, here is, is this the snowflakes for sale? Okay, so here's one of my problems. I feel like I don't have a problem with back stitching, but you cannot read it on this chart. Um, skates and sleds, I think is that one. And then the big center block I finished. So I finished three, so it's really not bad. Uh, the problem is that I don't, I don't know. I don't love it anymore. I don't know if maybe, can I stash unload something I've already stitched three of? I have most of the charts. I, again, it doesn't snow here. <laughs> why, why did I pick? Such a white, snowy, wintry. I mean, it's so cute. It really is. But I don't know if I'm gonna work on this anymore. I don't feel the desire to. Um, man, okay, what a great start, all these projects. It's fine. I mean, these are the earliest ones and there's a reason why I haven't finished them yet. You know, like as many whips as I have, I don't tend to let things linger too long. So, there's probably a reason why it's been lingering. Um, I'm using most of the called for colors with a couple changes. I don't remember the changes off the top of my head. Um, <coughs> oh, um, and then I'm using a 36 count Dove by Weeks. Which again, it's probably not helping because Weeks 36 is a little softer, looser, and I'm using one strand because that's what I like. And so the coverage of the white isn't the best coverage it's okay I mean it's fine but I think I think all the white um that's kind of contributing I don't know I'm just gonna put this away before I keep talking about it and stress myself out about it okay next up is Stacy Nash Primitive's Tribute to Summer and I started this one let's see January 15th 2020 
almost a year ago. And I love this one. I do want to finish this one. Um, I don't love my fabric because it's an old weeks, but it, the colors really pop and it is really pretty. Um, so I will be finishing this one for sure. I'm using a 40 count cocoa linen by weeks. And here is where I got to. Just did my upper right corner start, like always. And the border is so pretty, but it is really complicated to stitch. It's not like a memorize the pattern and off you go type vine of any kind. Um, so it's really fun to stitch on. It's just, you gotta pay attention. Um, that combined with, I mean, the fabric's not that bad. If 40 count weeks, old weeks isn't, isn't terrible. It's just, I don't know. I just haven't pulled this one out in a long time. Probably because I started with so many other samplers after I started this one that I worked on, but I definitely, this will get finished. I love the colors and I want to see this one finished. <laughs> oh, and then I leave myself um, notes. Apparently I had to steal chamomile. Uh, <laughs> I had to steal chamomile out of this bag at some point. So that's a note to myself when I go to stitch it. Um, you need some chamomile. <laughs> so next up is one I really want to get back to. Um, this is, let me pull a couple of the charts for you. It's the Little uh, House Needleworks American, Early American series. So there's nine charts um, in that series. And I started this one, looks like back in December. Oh, I was wrong on my Tribute to Summer. Tribute to Summer I started in December of 2019. So, um, and, and I started this Early American series in December of 2019 as well. Um, not that it matters. Who cares when I started things? I just have a spreadsheet. I'm trying to follow it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I really want to get back to this one soon. I kitted this up at Needleworks in Copper's Cove on my first visit to that store, which is also where I learned that if you buy pattern fabric and floss at Needleworks, how much do they give you? Like 15% off? I think it's 15. I don't know. It was great. <laughs> so I bought all the charts, the flosses they had in stock, and I didn't write down the linen color at the time, but this is a Zweigert base. It's not Confederate gray, but I feel like it looks kind of like it maybe, I don't know. But here is where I'm at with early Americans. So I had three blocks done and started on that center block. So I made really good progress last year on this. Um, I just got distracted as is, you know, what I'm gonna do, um, but I got Martha Washington, Paul Revere, Molly Pitcher, and I started on that center freedom block. So yeah, love this one and can't wait to get back to it. I'm using all the called for floss, just a um, mystery piece of Zweigert. Okay, next up is Stitcher's Resolution by Heartstring Samplery. This one says, when in doubt, always buy more linen and thread. Stitch all day and absolutely no housework allowed. Always start a new project before the last one is finished. Welcome to the whip parade. <laughs> Requiring a return to number one. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw this and I was like, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> so I just got started up there in the right corner. All the samplers I hold up are just all the right corners and I really feel like I need to like label that video or this video like a right corner sampler parade. <laughs> I mean I've made more progress on some of them but a lot of them it's just like I did the right corner. <laughs> yeah but the colors on this are so pretty. Um, I definitely will get back to this at some point. I just have not stitched on this and let's see when did I start it? January 15th 2020 probably it's been since like January 30th, 2020, since I touched this, which, you know, oops. Um, I don't remember what the called for linen, let's see, classic homespun, that's not what I'm using. I'm using the called for flosses, but not the called for linen. Okay, next up is one that I am going to get done during samplerary, my January and February of sampler stitching this year. Um, this is, has been close to a finish for like a year. <laughs> Uh, well, I guess not quite a year because I started this in February of uh, 2020. So just, you know, this year, this year, that feels like forever ago, right? 
Um, so here is Plum Street Samplers Blackberry House. Um, if you are following along with me from the beginning of my videos, I was stitching on this back in July and set it aside, I think, to do sampler September stuff maybe. And then I just haven't been back to it. And I, I'm going to finish it in the next couple of months because it's beautiful and I want it framed and on my wall. So shake out the wrinkles. Here is Blackberry House. So you can see I've done the top and then... I'm trying to fill in that big, humongous urn in the center, and then I need to do, um, there's like a little motif that's over here, and then I gotta finish the alphabet um, at the bottom, and then that's it, I'm done. I am using all of the called for flosses, and I am using a lakeside, I'm pretty sure it's vintage light exemplar, or just light exemplar. I think it's, I have it marked as vintage, so I think this is the vintage light exemplar. Um, one over two. <laughs> And I am really hoping that I can find, I don't, I'm not going to do the cabinet just because it's beautiful, but I wouldn't really have anywhere to put it. Or I want to put this on my wall. So I'm going to try and find this kind of painted blue wood frame, I think, because I just love it in there. I think it's so cool. Okay. Old West Dry Goods. <laughs> it's a tumbleweeds chart, but I think it's part of Little House Needleworks. Division of Little House Needleworks. This is a dry goods store. I just, I love, I have a thing for cactuses and like Southwest vibe um, stuff. And I just thought this was so cute. I don't know where it's going to go. Probably with my patriotic stuff, even though it's not really patriotic. I don't know. Uh, I just love it. And so I started this one back again in February, uh, end of February of 2020. And there's, I didn't even finish stitching <laughs> this strand of floss. It's still just in there. Um, <laughs> that's as far as I got. Just kind of started at the top and worked my way down. And yeah, it's cool. It's a pretty, I mean, it's not big, but I thought it was, it looks like a little small, but then you start stitching it and you're like, okay, no, it's pretty stitch heavy. Um, I am doing this one on 32 count vintage pearl barley by Lakeside, which is just ugh, vintage pearl barley, or even maybe just pearl barley from Lakeside is like just the lovely the nicest. I've stitched two projects on it. I need like yards more. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we're on a big one. Woo! Let me get this one out. This is Heartstring Samplery. Consider the lilies. You know it. You love it. I just watched Celeste, uh, Celeste Creates Whip Parade last night and she showed hers. Oh, Celeste, it's beautiful. I wish I was that far along. She, I think, started hers in March of last year, she said, and um, her goal is to finish it like within a year. I started mine on April 25th, 2020. I don't think, I'm not making that a goal. I don't think I'm gonna get it done. I am definitely gonna be working on this during samplery. I wanna get back to this one so much, but um, I don't think there's any way I'm going to have it finished unless that's the only thing I do till April, which I could do, but, uh, that's not really what I want to do. So let me just show you where I'm at. <laughs> Here she is. Is that in frame? <laughs> wow. Oh, I still have a needle. Yeah. Tucked in there with some thread. Cool. 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 <laughs> let me fold it so I can show you. Uh, I haven't even looked at this in so long. It's so pretty. Yeah, the, the tree is the center part. There's a halfway point of the top. So I'm working my way towards halfway across the top. <laughs> so maybe I'm close to 25% done. I don't know. Um, this one is beautiful. It's so fun to stitch on. There's so many little tiny motifs and big motifs <laughs> and color changes. They're so many colors. Um, I'm using all the call for with I think one or two that I had to sub because I didn't I didn't have them or couldn't find them and I'm using 40 count winter's brew instead of 28 count and yeah just doing one over two. So I can't wait to get back to this one very soon. Okay next up 
is the Drawn Thread Sunny Side Sampler. And I started this one in June of this year. It doesn't, it feels like I started this forever ago, but I guess I started it in June. I'm using all of the called for MPI and Dinky Dye silks on this one. And man, it doesn't look like I've stitched very much, but I remember stitching on this one for a while. It's just, I think I'm on a 40 count, so it's like pretty dense um, and it's with silk. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I kind of got the first two houses done. I started some of the over one stitching in the letters. Um, started putting in some of the specialty stitches on the bottom letters and I I want to get I mean this one's gonna get finished I don't know when this one probably isn't on my samplery plans because there's um, some others I really want to work on but uh, this one will definitely get finished I love it and I saved up and collected silks for so long so I could stitch this all in silks and it takes so many silks so this one will get done and then I'll have to find a project that needs similar silks to use all these up. <laughs> okay, next up is one I started again in early June this year. And I don't know why I didn't just finish this one. It's so small. This one is called Berry Days at Thistledown Farms by Brenda Gervais. And it is so sweet and so summery. And that's why I started it in the summer because I loved it. And I got all the called for flosses. So pretty. And fabric am I using? Uh, Raw Natural Zweigert is what I have written down. And apologies for the crease and the active thread still tucked into the project. But there's where I got most of the border and one of the flowers on the side. So I think this is as far over, oops, like as wide as it's going to be. So it's really not a big one. So this should be, I should be able to get this one done some point this year. Maybe I'll pull this one out again as it gets closer to summer. Oh, this one. I want to get back to this one. This is Ink Circles After the Roses. This came out at market last year and I just fell in love with it. And I've never done an Ink Circles pattern before. It's my first one. And it's fun. I just... I think I started in a bad place. I always start in the upper right corner. I think for this one, I really should have started in the center because it's a mandala type effect, right? So this one, you know, the four, it's like four quadrants and they all are the same, just rotated. And so I've stitched one of the quadrants and moved on. And I'm like, oh, I'm just stitching the same thing. Um, so I think if I had gone center out and viewed each kind of ring as a whole, like... I don't know. I think it might have tricked my mind a little bit. Um, and that's why I haven't made more progress on this. I will definitely finish this. I just haven't worked on it in a good little bit. So here is where I'm at with Consider the Roses. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm moving all of the called for flosses. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count Lakeside Linen Maritime White. So pretty. So, yep, I need to get back to that one. Okay, next one is in one of my homemade project bags. Anybody remember what's in this bag? <laughs> in the bag <laughs> is Teresa Kogut's Land That I Love. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And this will definitely be getting stitched on during samplerary. I don't think I've stitched on this one since like September and I want to get back to it. I started this one. Oh yeah, I wanted to start it for 4th of July, but I don't think my chart came until like the 7th or 8th of July. So I, um, but I started this in like mid July. And here is where I was at. I just worked my way down the right side of the pattern. And um, because I wanted to do a house at the start, so I didn't get bogged down later with all the house stitching. And I got, you know, the border all the way down the right side. And yeah, I mean, just kind of working my way across, doing whatever section calls to me. I love this. I hand dyed my own fabric. Well, I picked a 
Zweigert limestone, mostly because I couldn't find tin roof in a Zweigert base and I didn't want to do the old weeks. And I never found tin roof. And I actually am kind of glad because a lot of people who stitched it with tin roof were like, oh, I don't know about the colors. I'm using all the called for colors and I think they look lovely on um, the Zweiger limestone. I did add kind of a brown tan over dye on the limestone to darken it a little bit. And I think my colors really work and I'm really happy. And I feel like it does look a lot similar, like pretty similar to the called for, like that's charted and like, what do you call it? Like in the photos, like of the pattern. I feel like mine looks pretty close. I know the photo is a little bit lighter, I think, but I don't know. Anyways, I am really happy with this one and I cannot wait to get back to it. It is a big old piece. So I'm not making any promises on finishing this one, but um, I will definitely be stitching on this during samplerary. Oops, I don't have the chart for this one. Um, I'll have to put a picture up on the screen. I don't know where the cover photo went. I mean, I have the chart. I just don't know where the cover photo is. Um, this is, what's it called? Let me just consult my list. The Visitor by Blackberry Rabbit. And I'm stitching it on 40 Count Seraphim Dusty Road with all of the called for flosses. And this is getting done soon this year before spring. Look, I love this one. Um, I worked on this a lot over the summer, if you were watching my earlier videos. Yeah, I started this in July 20th is when I started that one. I just love the shading and the color variations. There's a lot of floss colors, but it all works so well, so beautiful. So I just have to finish the bird and a leaf that the bird is on and this one will be done so yeah I can't wait I know it's on sampler but it's gonna get st started getting stitched on sometime soon because I want to get back to this one I miss it okay next in the whip parade is the prairie schooler animal alphabet and I got this and started this for my little nephew Andrew Andrew Pantalones, as we like to call him. <laughs> Andy Pants. Andrew Pantalones was his father. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Does anybody know that joke? We use it all the time in my family. <laughs> Please call me Andy. <laughs> Andrew was my father. Um, anyways, but I am stitching Andrew. And I've got the REW done halfway. This needs to get done soon because I want to give it to Andy for his third birthday. I know he won't care. I'll give him a toy too. But uh, his third birthday is at the end of January. So I need to work on this. Um, I'm using the called for DMC, but I think I adjusted some colors um, as I went just for funsies. And I am using a 28 count linen. Don't remember the color. Did I have it written down? Oh, Ivory's Weigert and call for DMZ. <sighs> Guys, oh, I love this one. This is gonna be stitched on in samplery. It's not even close to a finish, but maybe I'm gonna try and finish it. That's how much I love this one. We'll see. <laughs> oh, Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. I want this framed by spring and summer. I'm gonna say it. Let's get it done, Liz. Let's get it done. I'm using all of the Call for Luscious Colors. And I am stitching it on a 36 count Picture This Plus Legacy. And, oh, it's so pretty. Here is where I stopped. Got the whole top done and got a little start on the middle section. Love, 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 love. <laughs> love. <laughs> so yeah, this will be coming out soon. Oh. Also, I've shown you once, I've shown you a hundred times. My favorite tiny scissors. And action. Next up, Merry Christmas by Blackbird Designs. 
Um, I Celeste Creates finished this recently. We started it right around the same time and she just whew, blew through it. I was so jealous. Why do I even say jealous? I could have done it too. <laughs> Except I start doing things. Do I need to edit that part out? Do I sound crazy? Maybe I'll leave it in. You guys tell me if I sound crazy and then I'll retroactively edit it out. No, I don't know. Uh, Blackbird Designs, Merry Christmas. So fun, so pink. Um, this is what I did. I am never a person who stitches the border first, ever. I don't do it, but I did on this one. It's so little and cute. This is a 40 count, God, this color is washing out. It is almost the exact same color as my sweatshirt. Does it look like it? Yeah, okay. So it's almost, it does even, it still looks lighter, but um, this was a, let's see, what was it called? It was like Vintage Wild Rose by Lakeside. And you can even see, you can see I overdyed it because you can see little spots in certain places where the dye got weird. Luckily only a couple of spots. Oh yeah, it was a couple of spots on the back. And so I'm using, um, not the back, the like other side of this fat ape. So I'm just using this piece of it. And I have all of the called for colors, which are gonna be lovely and beautiful. Um, I just need to get back to this one at some point. Probably, probably not in samplerary. I mean, it's a Merry Christmas sampler, so I'm gonna guess. Um, I'll probably wait and start stitching on this a little closer to next year. Ooh, next up, we're getting into some Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, Christmas and samplers is what's coming up, so get ready. Uh, this one is Santa's Trips by Barbara Anna. I'll put a picture up on the screen. And I have stitched most of the top row. This is where I left it. So cute. This is 40 count vintage maple syrup by Lakeside Linens. Right, vintage maple syrup or sugar? I always get it wrong maple syrup vintage maple syrup and I did a conversion to NPI from the DMC's I just really wanted to stitch with NPI silks and so I know I'm doing the bad thing and letting them be on rings I can already see how fuzzy they are but I don't really like the bags like I don't find like there's a good way to get threads out of those bags without just unraveling the whole thing and taking a thread raveling it all back up I don't know so I do the floss rings even though I can tell that my silks are a little fuzzy. That's okay. So I, um, yeah, I did a NPI conversion because I just really wanted to stitch with them. And, but I'd stay true to the colors. Like I did a, as close a conversion as I could to the DMC. And this one is so fun to stitch. Um, it's just pretty dense. And there was some other Christmas projects that I just got distracted by. So I know I'll come back to this one uh, for next Christmas, but um, yeah. It'll, it'll hang tight till then. Okay, so on September 1st, I started out of the Home for the Holidays book. I started Christmas Garden with my friend Celeste. How many times am I gonna mention Celeste in this video? Celeste, Celeste, Celeste. Hi, friend. <laughs> um, Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. That was our hashtag September Christmas Garden. And we started it in celebration <laughs> of Sampler September where I went a little bonkers and started a bunch of samplers, but that's okay. They're all really gorgeous. I just haven't finished any of them yet. <laughs> so this was the first one. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this recently, it hasn't updated since then. So I was stitching on this this month um, but I haven't stitched on it in a couple of weeks or a week or so. And I am using 36 count picture this plus sand. And I changed my red to ruby slippers from Gast and my gold to bees knees from weeks. And that's where I'm at. Okay, I had to clean off the table a minute because it was getting crazy. Let's see, we're on number 21. So we've got 11 more to go. Okay, this one is the Scarlet House and Topley 1802. This was another sampler September start. I just love it. I need to get back to this one. I probably will try to work on this one during samplerary because I love it. Pardon the fold. 
but that is where I got to on my Ann Topley. Got the first three rows of the alphabet done. So I'm about a third of the way, maybe about a third of the way down. Um, my fabric is folded in case you're concerned that I don't have enough fabric down there. I do. <laughs> um, let's see. I am stitching this one on 36 count weeks twilight. It is the old weeks, but um, it's fine for this. And I'm using all of the called for flosses. Although I feel like I did. Yeah, I subbed out rain shower for one of the grays because it just wasn't showing up on my fabric. Um, I don't remember which one now. I haven't looked at this sampler in a little while, but otherwise I'm using all of the called for uh, flosses. It's the same bag every time. Steph from uh, Just Keep Stitching told me she laughed so hard at my, uh, was it my Blackbird Parade where I couldn't get this bag open? And again, I'm like, why didn't I get rid of this bag then? <laughs> What's wrong with me? Oh, hold please. Got it. Okay, I don't have the book, the sewing club book next to me, but this is Tiny Treetops by Blackbird Designs Sewing Club Book. Um, I'm stitching on 36 count Picture This Plus doubloon. And I'm using all of the called for flosses. And I just was working my way from the right side across. This was another sampler September start. Love the colors. Love the size. It's going to be a nice wide skinny one. Um, I just think it's lovely. And I don't know, this could be a samplery finish maybe. I could probably get this one done. We'll see. I'm not sure what all is gonna call me in sampler, or samplery. I keep wanting to call it sampler September. Um, I don't know, we'll find out. I, I think I could get this one done though. I might put that on the to be completed list. Next up was my last sub sampler September start, which was Birds of a Feather, Sally Spencer sampler. It's really hard to see that photo. This is unfortunately an out of print chart. Um, I bought it off of a stash unload and yeah, good luck in your search. I know these are hard to find. Oh, I haven't looked at this one since like September, I don't think. Oh, this is so pretty. What am I stitching this on? Lakeside Linen Vintage Sand Dune, 36 count. love it. That's where I got. Um, let's see, there's four rows of a big alphabet, then the verse, and then the bottom. So um, I'm not even close to the halfway point, but that's okay. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So I do need to finish this before my birthday in June. It gives me six months. Maybe I'll put this on a samplerary finish because <laughs> I don't know if you notice in the top numbers, the line of numbers, um, I changed the 37, um, which is my age, uh, to a light blue color. And so I have until June <laughs> to make this accurate that I stitched this in my 37th year. <laughs> oh, and I am using, let's see, called for. Yeah, all the called for flosses. Next up is a false start that I did not manage to get finished in time. Let's see, I started this September 29th and it is Autumn Alphabet by the Scarlet House. And I had bought that board, the, um, I always forget what they're called, not a cheese board. You guys know what I'm talking about, those boards. But I had bought this um, from like Homestead Needleworks on Etsy that sells them and got a little start. Well, not a little start. I, I really have it halfway done, um, but I just never finished it. So I will definitely pull this back out and get it finished for next fall. So cute. Uh, this is 40 count R&R &R Beach Brew with uh, the called for, wait, is it called for? Oh no, I switched to my own colors. So 
Um, I'm not using the called for colors. I just picked similar ones I had on hand. Okay, this next one is so pretty and I don't know why I didn't stitch on it more during the Christmas season. This might come out during the year just for fun. I don't know. Uh, this is Winter Wonderland by Blackbird Designs. Um, again, unfortunately, this one is out of print. I didn't know that when I bought it. I just found it um, online on a local needle workshop's website, like kitted up, which was great. <laughs> and then apparently it's out of print. I had no idea. So um, it's a loose feathers pattern. Let's see. I'm not sure. Oh, 2009, it looks like. 2009. So it's not that old. It's just, oh no, 2010. So it's really not that old. It's just um, for some reason out of print. So uh sorry about that hopefully they'll reprint it i know they've been you know doing their books with some of the popular charts from the past um i just got a little start on the right border in that first little tree with the crow or the blackbird or whatever it is and i am on i'm switching on vintage sand dune or is it just sand dune Oh, <laughs> it's, it's neither of those. 36 count uh, meadow rue. Just regular meadow rue. That's what I'm, that's what I'm stitching on. There's uh, a lot of white with this house and I just really wanted to pop off the, uh, the, pa uh, the fabric a little bit. So I went with meadow rue. Okay, next up is what I really thought I was going to get finished for Christmas. I started this in October, October 10th. And this is Prairie Schooler Christmas Eve. She's just lovely. Um, I'm using all the called for colors with the exception of the reindeer color, which I think has changed over the years. The color called for now is just way too dark. Um, so I did change that. And I'll fold the fabric. Here is where I got to. Got one of those reindeer stitched and worked my way across the bottom and started on the second reindeer. I don't know why I petered out. I mean, I think it's just because I started so many Christmas things and I was like, well, I'm only going to get a certain amount of these done. And I kind of just went for it with some of them rather than all of them. And uh, yeah, so I'll get back to this and hopefully get this one done for next Christmas. I am stitching this on a fabric that I don't think exists anymore. It's 32 count fabric flare tumbleweed. When I've searched, because people have asked me about this fabric, I cannot find it. So um, I don't think it exists anymore, but it is a uh, 32 count tumbleweed by Fabric Flare. And I really like it for this pattern. So I'm doing two over two with a called for DMC, um, except I changed my reindeer color. Okay, next up is Souvenirs from the Heart, Home for Christmas by Brenda Gervais. And I am not doing this one over one. Uh-uh. Uh, <laughs> I decided to do... 40 count vintage light exemplar. I had a piece left over from that Blackberry house. And so I'm just doing one over two and it is adorable. I think I only worked on this literally one day. Um, so cute, so pretty. I'm using all the call for flosses. And yeah, I'll uh, have this on my list to get back to for next Christmas. And I definitely, I think wanna do this as a little pillow um, for my pillow bowl. Okay, this next one, I just really wanted to start something on Halloween. We kind of had like an all day movie day. It was a Saturday, right, this year on Halloween. And so um, Rob's friend who lives alone um, and stays to himself. Anyways, somebody who we were not worried about having COVID. He came up and um, we did like an all day kind of movie marathon with pizza and candy. And I just was like, I want to sit on the couch and stitch something for Halloween. So... I did Cats on Parade by Blackbird Designs. That's what I started. And I just stitched on this one day. I'm using Espresso Bean by Gast. And I'm stitching mine on 36 count Vintage Sugared Ginger by Lakeside. And that's where I got. That's the tail and back leg of the first cat. <laughs> So not a big start, but that's okay. Um, this will get pulled back out probably closer to fall. And uh, yeah, I think this will be so cute. I'm excited to get back to it. I just, you know, <laughs> just really wanted to work on something Halloween-y on Halloween, even though I knew I was gonna put it away for Christmas stuff. That's, that's how you end up with 33 whips, guys. That's how it happens. <laughs> 
Okay, next up is Sugar Cookies by the Cricut Collection. I started this November 17th and I knew I wasn't going to finish it before Christmas, but I thought I would work on it more. I didn't. Um, but I did get the S in the little house and some of the holly leaves. And yeah, I will definitely get back to this one uh, for next Christmas. I am stitching this one on 40 count R&R &R Lucky Penny, and I'm using all the called for DMC colors. Next up is Mr. Marshmallow by Brenda Gervais. I started this one December 4th. This cute little snowman. He's not that little though, he's pretty big. Uh, <laughs> and here is the progress I made. So um, I think I just did like two days of stitching on this. And this is on a, let's see, 36, is it 36? Yeah, 36 counts Weigart. It started as antique white, but I dyed this kind of um, faded hot pink type color. And I just love it with that aqua cup and the snowman, the white snowman. And I, I think I'll stitch on this this winter. So I don't think this is going to get put away with all the Christmas stuff yet. Um, yeah. So that's Mr. Marshmallow. All the called for flosses so far. I'll probably make some changes, but so far called for um, on my own hand dyed fabric. Okay. I started on December 7th, Mary and Minty by Brenda Gervais, which she released as a free stitch along. And that is as far as I got. So this will definitely come out next Christmas to be finished. I'm using all of her called for colors and I am on 36 count vintage Chantilly cream linen. Why do I even buy these Amazon bags if I can't open them? Okay, <laughs> this one you just saw and I have it stitched on it this week so it hasn't changed from um, last week's video. But this is Christmas Joy by Barbara Anna Designs. And I will try to make the color show up better because I think it showed up a little washed out when I held it up. This is accurate back here. This is 36 count agave by Zweigert. Just so pretty. Um, and then when I hold it up closer, it blows out a little bit lighter, but so cute. Love this one. I'm going to keep stitching on this one, I think, for a little while. We'll see. Um, I haven't stitched on it this week because you're going to see my last whip in a second, which is something I started a couple days ago. <laughs> and that's what I've been obsessed with. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, the last whip <laughs> is a new start. And it is Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. Um, this is my new year new start. New early. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you already heard that hilarious joke. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I really wanted to start it. So I did. And I've been obsessed. And that is what I've been stitching on the past few days. I think I started this on Sunday night. Actually, I don't know if I stitched on this yesterday. Um, what else did I, what I have stitched on? I must have stitched on it yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, there she is. I am using all of the called for flosses on 40 count Brenda's Brew by R&R. &R. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is definitely going to be part of my samplery. I will definitely want to be stitching on this one, I know. Whew. Guys, we made it. <laughs> I've been filming for over an hour. Uh, we'll see what happens when I edit out all the zippers and shuffling, but, uh, this probably is a long one. So if you made it to the end, um, congratulations, <laughs> you're a champion. And yeah, that is what I'm entering 2021 with. Um, I definitely want to get some of these. I mean, there's some of these that I want to get done and work on right now. So I know that, um, I know I'm going to make some progress this year. I don't, I'm not going to say like, oh, I want to end the year with less than I started with, but I definitely want like a goal for next year is to revisit this whip parade 
and see what I have rolling into the next year and see what I actually got done. And if I didn't touch any of them or really didn't make any good progress, like, is it something I need to abandon or stash unload, you know, and rethink? Because I'm not going to just force myself to work on something if I'm not enjoying it. Um, you know, so yeah, I'm just excited to have this to look back on next year and or throughout the year as I get stuff done um, and check things off my spreadsheet and get things framed and on the wall. And yeah, just very excited about all the stitching that I'm going to get done in 2021. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you probably in my kit parade, which I've already filmed. But they'll probably go up out of order. I don't know. I've got a kit parade coming for you. And I'm gonna do a tutorial for those notebook covers. That's been requested, highly requested. I didn't know everybody was interested, but yes. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to share with you guys. That was my 2020 whip parade. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.